Okay, you guys, <laughs> he's coming in the room. Here we go. And thank you, God. Like we always do, when we're starting these interviews, my name is Anastasia C.C. Davis, founder and CEO of The Finesse Factory, an upcoming brand that just wants to make sure that we help anybody and everybody finesse their wildest dreams no matter the cards you're dealt. So, of course, being a finesser um, and also being from the Midwest and having a lot of love for Chance the Rapper, I follow him on Instagram. So when I followed him on Instagram, I saw that a post popped up and I was like, oh, okay, Chance the Rapper's having a concert, a little virtual concert or whatever, okay. And when I saw the concert, um, he had posted this flyer right here. And when Chance the Rapper posted that flyer, I went down a rabbit hole as most finesses do. And I just wanted to know like everything I could find out about it. Like what was it, it's virtual, how do I watch it? Who was behind it, who's up on the team? I actually saw that someone had shouted out our dear guest for today and said, oh, you know, Federico Ariela Sanchez is the one who did it. <laughs> did I do it right? Hey, okay. <laughs> And I slid in the DMs, as you know, any millennial would do. And when I slid in the DMs, to my surprise, he wrote back and responded. And, you know, we just want to talk about his journey and how he went from attending a Chance the Rapper concert to being able to do the graphic work for Chance's last concert in 2020, which is like, come on, man. Like, out of all the different things that people have been going through in 2020, what a beautiful way to wrap it up. So if you want to say your name way more beautifully and better than I can, just introduce yourself. Thank you for being here and just give us a little backstory about where you're at right now in the world because he is not here in America right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Federico Ariel Sanchez. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I've been here all my life. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a graphic artist. I don't like to say graphic designer because I'm not graduated yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I currently was dedicated to sign both single and album cover art, but mostly we poster for both for music videos and films, independent films also. That's mainly what I'm doing right now. Tell us, um, like, how did you find out about Chance the Rapper? How in the heck did you get the opportunity to do graphic work for his project? Yeah, I made some, like, I posted my page. I was doing art but just for fun, I nothing commissioned all these videos, I did angels, I did no flowers, I did same drugs. And well, three years later he was he came to Europe to go to Argentina. I, I came to, I saw two whole shows because I wanted to be up front. I still didn't get to be just after him, the, the next show where the Red Hot Chili Peppers, so obviously there were many that came like 9 a.m. and they were ready to spend the whole time. Mm. But the show was amazing. Uh, no, I get phone him. I keep, I keep doing the signs with Kimberly's big day. I did a poster for the, the whole shower video. And that, okay. That's one. That's my song. He <laughs> and he saw that one. He would post it on his page and follow me. After that, you know, like a year, a little more, like zero content. He then he reached out like four days ago, five, I don't know. And he told me about this one to commission the post for me project. He sent me the pictures, basically told me the inspiration behind it, you know, what he was based on the songs from the special family with your night. And yeah, I got to work. We had, I had to be like super fast because it, was, it had to be as we done. So I think we did it like today, it's usually take way longer. Mm -hmm. well, we got it done and it came great. First revision, he had some notes a lot, but they were actually all right because when I, when I did correct everything he asked for, I looked at him and I was like, oh yeah, this is great. <laughs> It's a great time because I love, I love when it's like a new exchange of what, of the art and the what yeah. you wanna go and sell and do the design. 
and it's not, not, it's not like try changing it or kind of like you do another thing. It feels like the barrel is constantly change back and forth all the time. And I love what came up for me. Hey, that's come on. Let's give a clap. Let's give a clap. That's dope. I love that. So he slid. So, you know, so basically, Chance slid in your DMs almost. Like, this is almost like what I did to you, he did to you. <laughs> Crazy. I was talking to you last night and I was looking at your Beyonce check up on it. I was like, yes, you, you were hitting. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like telling my mom and I was like, man, you know, he makes like all these songs that I listen to. And I was like, he has really good taste in music, like very eclectic taste. He all over the place with his music, just like me. So I loved it. And I was like, man, he's making all of this stuff look like movies, like the cool off with Missy Elliott. And like, I was just looking like, yo, this is dope. Like he's lit with it. Yeah. I really like what you do. So when did you get into um, graphic design? Because you said you're not going to be a graphic artist just yet because. Uh, <laughs> well, um, when I was in high school, I downloaded Photoshop and start just having fun with it a little bit. You know, just the same way like, you know, five pages and maybe like edits just putting pictures together, nothing like you see it like phone call graphic design. That was like for three for three years maybe. Then I dropped it. And during college, I was doing my second or third year I guess. And I was like crazy stressed from trying to study too hard, all the finals, etc. And uh, I started to use it again as a relief, just having fun with it. And that was, I think, uh, 2014, 2015. I started making a movie poster because I don't, I don't really remember why, why I decided to do movie posts, but um, I love music both for the audio, but I'm also a big fan of movie, the music videos. So i really, like, I get a lot of music from the eyes, not from the ears. I guess I just wanted to find a way to paint all that. I, I was like showing I appreciate the music, but I can't sing at all. <laughs> and <laughs> that was something I can do. So I guess I, I just narrowed that to that. Yeah, you said I'm going to stay in my lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was great to show love for both the music and from the, from the creators about the music videos. It was I always to show love to the director, the cinematographer, everybody. Oh wow, that's really dope. So what school? So what school were you going to? Were you going to school in Argentina? Are you going to school online? Um, but it's been a long story. Well, I actually started graphic design at university this year. I did not do COVID. I did like my first week, and then uh, then it became all online. Mm -hmm. But like, all these things when everything happened, everything was so uncertain. School was very expensive. I was covering everything by myself. Yeah. So I decided to just, I said, no, I'm not going to pay for some, for all these classes online. And I'm going to money to help the family because they had to go to the business at the moment. You know, because they didn't want to be in touch with people that didn't have to be worried about it. So I said, just give me some pause and give the money to your husband. And luckily, it ended up turning amazing because. I want to keep studying, but not having saying no, I was like, okay, I'm going to be learning my own all I can, and I'm going to grow this business as much as I can, because now I have to, it's like, yeah. it's not just supporting me, it's supporting everyone in the house. Yeah. So it ended up being, turning up well, because, you know, it's the biggest year I ever had in terms of business. Wow. And I created as well, because I'm definitely way more proud of everything that you signed with you and everything you for. You know, Finesse Factory, a lot of the things I keep saying that we stand for is just like, no matter what comes your way, no matter what cards you dealt, making sure that you find a way out to, you know, end up on topic regardless. Not, not by stepping on everybody on your way up, but you know, <laughs> not like that. You know, that's not the type of finesse we're speaking about, not scamming people. But we're talking about more of a higher form of hustling and making sure that it's not just about working hard, but working smart as well. Because there's so many people who work so hard, but they never see their dreams realized because they haven't figured out the key. So. With you, if you wouldn't mind sharing, because I know you shared on your social media, um, what are some of the different 
um, hardships you had to endure this year before you know you saw the sun come over the horizon and things start going your way what are some of those things because I want to make sure that the people who are watching this understand that it's not all candy and rainbows and that you know sometimes you know there's some things that happen that are kind of sad and yeah this year you know as I told you after my family started when the pandemic began the income became basically zero because well, they had like uh, English, uh, a drug crazy, like it was a candy or something. <laughs> um, and they didn't want to have the, the touch from all the customers that came in. They didn't want to risk that much, so they closed it. Mm -hmm. And well, my mom was that same year diagnosed with lupus disease. Mm -hmm. She was, was going to pain and blood travel went to doctors and they determined what it was, what well, from that same year. So well, she spent a long when she well, when it was discovered it was ready for the bad. So she was hospitalized in April, I think. And she's still like her mom's there all the time in the hospital and she passed out and it was July for her for two months. So yeah, that was horrible times, it was the hardest moment of my life, but you know, I don't know, it's, I don't know how to end it, but in a way that I feel like, oh, I guess I, when you see someone so long with the bag, it's pretty slow, it's not like, it just shock you, you kind of start to see it coming, and I feel like, in that way, I was able to, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's an easy pain out, you know. We were trying for a hard time for a long time, and it was almost like, okay, your life is horrible, but it's not in pain anymore. And you know, during that time, graphic design is really like the one thing in my life that uh, was going well, so I held on a lot to it. I was like creating more than ever and drawing more than ever because it was like everything else, like, you know, I had to leave school, like I told you. I was like always worried in my mind. I was worried about COVID because you know, and my mom's husband would go we'll visit to the hospital every day and he never knew if he was going to get caught in the hospital and in the house. Yeah. So I had to hold on to the being a creative and I was like the one thing that kept going well. Yeah. He's like, I gotta ride this wave because it's all I got right now. I, yeah. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like a lot of creatives that that's our outlet, you know. And you can't depend on too much out here in these streets. You be like, man, this is you know, health is unpredictable, pandemic, finances are a joke, um, and in your case, you know, losing loved ones, and it's just like I'm glad that you did find something that kept you grounded and that not only did you find something that kept you grounded and kept your head you know from just going crazy but that you found something and that it found you back and that it you know it started pouring into you and that you're getting recognition for your art and for your time and your talent and you know I don't know how you feel um spiritually but I consider myself a woman of God so I consider myself someone who believes that you know even though you know you're missing something in this element that god is pouring back into you for some of the things that you lost and by no means chance the rapper will never be your mama he can't he can't be but i do think that this is a step in the direction that will make your mom proud and that these are the the, the moments that unfortunately it's bittersweet because it's like these are the things you would want to share with her these are the things you you know so every like my mom she lost her mom and it's like every time something good happened it's a bittersweet moment because it's like yeah I'm happy that it happened but the person who I want to share it with is not here so I I just I come I commend your strength I commend your honesty and your transparency and I'm just glad that you're on here telling your story because there's so many people who've lost in the pandemic people who've lost like just due to the neighborhoods that they're in shooting and police violence or whatever else and you're like a living testament even if you don't want to be that strong role model you're it it's too late you're that guy because people need to see someone who has went through hell and has somehow still found their way 
on the top, moving in a beautiful direction, no matter what's happened with school, with family, with finances, God's making a way. You're you're being diligent and, and you're being purposeful with what you're doing. You said, oh man, there's too much content. Go to Chance's page because you might not find it on mine. That lets you know that you're working nonstop. And I was just telling my mom last night, I was like, man, this dude inspires me because sometimes even myself, when I'm doing content and I'm making videos or I'm doing different pieces of work, I can get a little uh, frustrated because you're like, you put so many hours, weeks, time into it. And then sometimes you're not getting the, the recognition or the love or the response that you feel you should be getting on these things in which you are, um, you just like, dang, 10 likes. Like I just spent 18 hours on that. And you're like only 10 people and zero comments and just stuff like that. And it's, you know, we live in a society in which social media is always trying to validate us and make us feel like if people aren't liking things and people aren't responding, then it's worthless. But you are a living testament that no matter who is and who isn't responding, the right people are watching and the right people will open doors for you. You just have to be consistent and stay faithful in your craft. I think it's like, like you said, it's consistency and believing in what you're creating. Because, you know, there was a moment, well, a moment like last year or last two years, you know, I, I like music that is not necessarily what is what's on top of the charts. You know, probably if you now ask me like, the tenth of, of the ten, but some of the whole I don't know. I probably don't know nine of them. I haven't heard them. It's not really what well. I listen. I I discover like ninety nine percent of the music by just opening YouTube and see what my recommendations are. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah, independent content, and you know. But when I started doing that on my page, like I didn't see. I would well, I would make one of those posts and they feel like. 20 likes, then maybe if I did someone that was more popular, it would be like 200. Mm -hmm. That was a like very interesting thing because you feel like you have to cater to a different type of content you see. But, you know, eventually I was like, no, nah, I want to do this my way. And I actually discovered it's actually what made me become more successful in the business, also because I discovered this huge uh, space of directors and cinematographers and artists that uh, they're all working and they all artists. follow you they all <laughs> follow you on instagram i was going crazy i was like ma do you see the people who is following you like they are the people behind the people as well like toby i don't you i'm not sure you remember toby like his cinematographer follows you his videographer his director like he's the dude who made the song like try jesus <laughs> not me oh yeah yeah it's incredible sometimes i had trouble like listening to the name because i never pronounce it and i just read it yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm so because i do not want to mess up my boy name i can't yeah so yeah he's incredible like all those visuals are like in terms of color and cinematography they're breathtaking they're incredible I just wanted to ask, like, what for, for other people who want to slide in DMs for people like yourself, what made you respond to me? And, you know, what also made you overcome your shyness and even be able to speak and record even right now, even though it's not in front of like a large audience, but be able to speak and tell your story anyway? Uh, first, I would like to pretty much everyone because I feel like even if they usually the DMs are like, but a small part of the commissions, and well, sometimes it's fan because that also that's a lot. <laughs> but then there's a lot of people that just like they see at the same day and they just give the one hundred more to the higher mode to say I love it. And you know, that was all the love when it was little, it was like so precious. And I tried to even if now I get a lot more likes for that, I try to see it the same way if someone that takes them to say that they like what you did. So I always try to reply and show her back. It's not the same to you. I actually was about to turn down, like I said, because I didn't want to do it on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, if I leave it without responding, it's going to be so good because she's going to be thinking about me. <laughs> and, some oh. more time too. and how did you overcome your shyness to even do this interview right here? Oh, 
Hi, Dita. Um, <laughs> She's like, that ain't, that ain't going nowhere. <laughs> hey, Dita, now, it's all day, like, when we started, like, oh, my God. Oh, it was extremely hard for But, I mean, I don't know. Now, it's, it's like, a million times less bad than I thought it would be. I was, because also, you are, like, we're great at this. I've seen interviews that are very, um, you know, like on TV and something like to see the guests, like, uh -huh, yeah. and I was like, I assumed that was going to be my type of person, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And you know, now that like, was great, so. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that we, we broke that ice that, you know, that you feel good. That makes me feel good for sure. And I'm just so glad that you came on and spoke to us. I And I always say us. It's always me, but I just always include, maybe it's like other people in my head or something. <laughs> I always say us. No, my mom is always like, brand, you know, usually, I, when you're a brand, it's like, it's something very normal to talk and like we. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just a very communal type of person. I just, I'm like us. We're doing it for us. So, you know, me and the 18 people up here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would like to end it on a note of, do you have any advice that you would like to give um, these future finessers in how they could just continue to strive for greatness no matter what type of hardships or loss that they may encounter in their life? Do you have anything for them? I think that you need to, first, I think that the, you need to be sure of what you're doing and that you need to be proud of it, you need to be happy enough doing it. I don't think it's great when you like when you see something is selling good so you decide to grab that and do it on your own, like something something I think you need to create something that you believe in on your own and make it grow and make it different. And you know, when you love it like in that way, you just you can dedicate it a lot and you they're willing to work harder. You know, so when it's not just a quick way to make a business or something because you know, of course they will never and question someone who needs money and makes business fast. But I think that when you're trying to make something because you want to be a brand and you want to, whatever you want to do, you need to make sure you love it first. You need to be willing to put a lot of work and try to not depend on the, on the validation of social media and everyone else at the moment, at the beginning, because it can be extremely frustrating. You can make the, great, the greatest content, and it, it may be not, it's not, it might not get all the love right away, especially now because social media is getting a lot more complicated in terms of what you get for free. If you're not willing to pay, it's going to be really rough for you from the beginning. So, you know, you need to be willing to go very slow and take a lot of classes, you know, community management, etc. But it's, it's a long road until you, you find your way. So you need to be ready for that. You need to love it a lot. Oh, spoken like a pro. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. <laughs> Say hey. Cause they were very family oriented around these neck of the woods. Hey, hey. <laughs> my mom. Hey. You see my twin, <laughs> my other twin, hey. my daddy twin, hey. and my boyfriend. Hey. Hi, hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they were they're all here in support of you. Or your definitely, definitely. You got any uh, encouraging words for our lovely friend in Argentina? Yes, keep on doing what you're doing, my brother. Uh, you're setting a fine example for the younger ones who are coming up and who want to follow into, you know, something similar to what you're doing. And um, God continue to bless you. And my words of experience for you is, I can really appreciate a person that mourns and moves. Um, that's not a word that I coined. Um, it's a preacher out of Atlanta. Her name is Real Talk Kim, and we saw her recently speak. She just lost her dad a few months ago, and I lost my mom three years ago. It just seems like it was yesterday. Matter of fact, on Thanksgiving um, would have been her birthday this year. 
um, Real Talk Kim talks about when you're going through, you still keep it moving even while you're mourning. And I will tell you that even though you're grieving and sometimes you hit depression and you're going to miss your mom, that she is so proud of you. There are some moments that I just feel my mom. I don't know if you felt that yet, but it's like, I just get overwhelmed by her presence. And that lets me know that really nothing ever dies and everything that she's ever taught you, it lives within you. Um, when you need that encouragement, you'll hear her in your heart. You'll hear her in your ear. I'm just so proud of the way you're um, mourning and moving and still creating because these are the seeds that she's planted into you, that you be more than a conqueror. I, I will be praying for you as you go through this journey. I wish you well, because I know that you have great things in your future. Mm -hmm. You have such a sweet disposition, a sweet, a very sweet personality, and your and your uh, art artistry game is cold. It is. It's cold. cold. <laughs> Let's sure. imagine at this age, being this young, way in Argentina, and catching the eye of Chance the Rapper. What is it going to really be as you continue to go through this journey? God bless you, sweetheart. Oh, it's such a good story. <laughs> Just keep grinding, man. I'm proud of you. You know, I, it's an inspiration to me. So definitely a big inspiration for for us over here in the U.S. So just keep. He's telling me he doesn't have to tell too much. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just keep pushing. You know, I've been through a lot as well. So definitely just got to stay motivated. Um, He's you know. someone who's lost his mother, too. Yeah, yeah my grandfather actually uh, passed almost a year ago, uh, next week. So just got to... And his grandparents are fighting COVID. Yeah, they're fighting COVID right now, so just... And his dad came out of COVID um, this year. Yeah. He's all hooked up to the ventilator. So we have a lot to be thankful for, even in the midst of this pandemic. Um, we're still flourishing mm -hmm. in the pandemic. Um, we're still thriving in the pandemic, and God is dope. He is dope. Yeah. <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope that you uh, have a great evening, and I can't wait to watch the um, virtual concert. Sorry. And it's gonna be good. And I'm look, he's gonna be like this girl. I <laughs> gave her one interview, and now she's blowing my line in half. I'm be like. <laughs> How'd you like yeah, this Yeah, because you're a finesse factory worker. <laughs> yeah, so you're now part of what we call the family of finessers, which is all us lunatics and then a whole bunch of other people who've come and interview all these different people who work in the industry and work in so many different lanes, not even just in the creative space, but you're officially part of the family of finessers. If you want, you can also become a resource, which is like people who want to do with things like what you do. You can be not a mentor, like hardcore, like they're always texting you or anything like that. But if they do want to hit you up for advice, if you do sign up to, um, you know, do that type of stuff, then we can have you down as a resource with the family of Vanessa. Because I know one of his best friends is a graphic artist. And he's, I know he would love to probably just talk to you like, oh, what program do you use? You will illustrate you for <laughs> Like, just yeah. go down a rabbit hole <laughs> of design talk, right? And so it's just stuff like that. Like, people, we just want to make sure that we can give access to things that people would normally not have based off of the backgrounds that they're coming from or the stereotypes that society has placed on them. So if you're down to become a resource, I would absolutely love it. And I'm not going to send a million kids your way at all. But if anybody ever did ask me or another factory worker, we would love to have. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how much I can give, but they ask me for sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of trivia where you, him, and her have a commonality um, in reference to Chance the Rapper this year. Oh yeah. They got to work um, on his album. Um, it was like a visual experience. Yeah. We we got to work. Uh, we the did work day. for Chance the Rapper for his um, album, The Big Day. So basically what we got to do was he had a, an entire pop-up record store in which he basically infused his whole life into a huge store during Lollapalooza, which is like basically Coachella for Chicago. 
and what he did it was called the big store which was really dope so this was his first official album which was all about his wedding and life and growing up in that his point in his girl. life and his daughter and we got to meet him which was really bomb he was really cool chill humble guy he hugged my mama he said what up he, he came to me first yeah <laughs> it was really amazing so it, it's cool to so i always have my eye on things that chance does anyway because we got to work with him in that capacity not for a very long time maybe for less than a month but it was really still cool going to work every day and being around all the people who help his stuff come to life um but yeah it was really dope and i just i love seeing other people who are working with him because i think he's an extraordinary creative such an amazing lyricist family guy he ain't perfect and he let us know and he put his dirt out there for everybody to see before anybody else can try him so i love it and i appreciate it and, and it just, shows us that he will go to the ends of the earth, literally, to Argentina, the Middle East, or wherever he wants when he finds that talent. And yeah. I and I and I was like, wow, he's in Argentina. I was like, that's what he did with Sarah. He went across the Atlantic or all anywhere. Get the best of the best. He gets the, the best, best of the best from maybe uh, places that most know, people may not be looking. He doesn't or even know about. He doesn't keep his eye on his, the four his, corners of the the, the states. He, yeah. He, and I think that's just his it's world, global. his view. Yeah, yeah he, has he has a global, global perspective. Global yes. perspective. So that's why his work is going to continuously transcend right. the average rapper or person or entertainer because he has such a world view. And I think that's a testament to And he camera. saw you. And he saw you, boy. <laughs> and he said, we, he, this ain't over either because you saw what he commented on you. He said that, you know, this is just oh the that's the beginning. He said, you know, we got more projects. He said, you know, we definitely gonna do this again. I said, we'll do it again. And again and again. Do it again. <laughs> Give us the Sanchez right. <laughs> so yeah, I love it. I'm so I'm excited for you and I can't wait to see you. And I'm gonna be that annoying like sister type of person. Like, yeah, you go for like, it. There is my chocolate sister again. Yeah, I'm like, here she wants. Here's my fake Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> There she go. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We ain't gonna hold you up no more. Thank you so much. Indeed. Respect. No respect. Respect. No respect. Oh, big oh, up yourself. Yeah, we're, from, we're from Jamaican roots over here. So you know. I'm from the U.S. That's all. <laughs> we Jamaican roots over here. Right. Sister. Respect, root boy. Respect. Yes. Respect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It was Good an night. honor. Good night. God bless Bye. you. Bye.